Eighth grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics, unit two, lesson one, projecting and scaling. Number one, rectangle A measures 12 centimeters by three centimeters. Rectangle B is a scaled copy of rectangle A. Select all the measurement pairs that could be the dimensions of rectangle B. Six centimeters by one and five tenths centimeters. First, I'll start by drawing rectangle A, 12 centimeters by 3 centimeters. And inside it, I'll draw the first rectangle, 6 centimeters by 1 and 5 tenths centimeters. And right away, I noticed that 6 centimeters is exactly half the length of 12 centimeters. And 1 and 5 tenths centimeters in height is half the height. So this could be rectangle B. Next, I'll draw the rectangle that's 10 centimeters by 2 centimeters. And without doing any math, this just doesn't look like it's going to be a scaled copy of rectangle A. I'll come back to it later to double check. Next, I'll draw the rectangle that's 13 centimeters by 4 centimeters. And I'll come back to this one too to double check. Now I'll draw the rectangle with the dimensions 18 centimeters by 4 and 5 tenths centimeters. This one looks like it could be a scale drawing of rectangle A, but I'll come back and check this one later too. This last rectangle is way too large to draw on this graph paper, so I'm gonna scale it down myself. 80 divided by 10 is eight, and 20 divided by 10 is two. So I'm actually going to draw a rectangle that's 10 times smaller than the dimensions listed for rectangle E. One method that you can use to see if a rectangle is a scale version of another rectangle is to run a line right through the corners of the original rectangle, just like I did in this example. If the line runs through the corners and matches, then those rectangles would be a scaled copy of the original rectangle, just like when you're resizing an image on the computer. If you look close enough, you'll see that three of these rectangles line up perfectly with rectangle A. So examples A, D, and E are all scaled copies of rectangle A and could be rectangle B. And examples B and C are not scaled copies of rectangle A, therefore they could not be rectangle B. Here's another way to determine if they will be a scaled copy of another rectangle without actually drawing the rectangle. Take the dimensions of the first rectangle, 12 by 3, and divide 12 by 3. 12 divided by 3 equals 4. Now do the same thing with the dimensions of the rest of the examples. 6 divided by 1.5 equals 4. 10 divided by 2 equals 5. 13 divided by 4 equals 3.25. So, so far I can tell that anything that doesn't equal 4 is not going to be a scaled version of rectangle A. 18 divided by 4.5 equals 4, and 80 divided by 20 equals 4. So again, A, D, and E are all scaled versions of rectangle A and could be rectangle B. Number 2. Rectangle A has length 12, and width 8. Rectangle B has length 15 and width 10. Rectangle C has length 30 and width 15. A. Is rectangle A a scaled copy of rectangle B? If so, what is the scale factor? I've illustrated both rectangle A at 12 by 8 and rectangle B at 15 by 10. Rectangle A looks like it could be a scaled copy of rectangle B, but just for fun, I'm going to draw some other rectangles that are scaled copies of rectangle B. If you were to draw that line through the corners like we did before, you would see that, yes, rectangle A is a scaled copy of rectangle B. Because that line would run perfectly through the corner of rectangle A and rectangle B. Now I'm going to find the scale factor. Let's look at rectangle B. I'm going to divide that up into fifths. Five fifths equals one whole height for rectangle B. Now let's compare the height of rectangle A to the five-fifths of rectangle B. The four-fourths of rectangle A is equivalent to four-fifths of rectangle B. So the scale factor of rectangle A is four-fifths. B. 
Is rectangle B a scaled copy of rectangle A? If so, what is the scale factor? Remember, rectangle A is the pink rectangle and rectangle B is the blue rectangle. Yes, rectangle B is a scaled copy of rectangle A. The 5 fifths of rectangle B is equivalent to 5 fourths of rectangle A. The scale factor of rectangle B is 5 fourths. C. Explain how you know that rectangle C is not a scaled copy of rectangle B. Remember, rectangle A is pink, rectangle B is blue, and rectangle C is not on the graph because rectangle C was way too big to draw on the graph. The dimensions for rectangle C are 30 by 15. Rectangle C's length is double the length of rectangle B's length, but its width is not double. And that's how I know that rectangle C is not a scaled copy of rectangle B. D. Is rectangle A a scaled copy of rectangle C? If so, what is the scale factor? If rectangle A is a scaled copy of rectangle B, and rectangle C is not a scaled copy of rectangle B, then rectangle A cannot be a scaled copy of rectangle C. Here's proof. The dimensions for rectangle A are 12 and 8, and the dimensions for rectangle C are 30 and 15. Since 15 is half of 30 and 8 is not half of 12, then no, rectangle A is not a scaled copy of rectangle C. Number 3. Here are three polygons. A. Draw a scaled copy of polygon A with a scale factor of 1 half. Our copy needs to have half the height and half the width. B. Draw a scaled copy of polygon B with a scale factor of 2. Our copy has to have double the height and double the width. C. Draw a scaled copy of polygon C with a scale factor of 1 fourth. The copy's height and width needs to be 1 fourth of the original. Number 4. From 8th grade, Unit 1, Lesson 15. Which of these sets of angle measures could be the three angles in a triangle? Remember that the sum of all three angles in a triangle must equal 180 degrees. B is the only option that would work. 50 degrees plus 60 degrees plus 70 degrees equals 180 degrees. Those three angle measures could be the three angle measures of a triangle. Number 5. From 8th grade, Unit 1, Lesson 14. In the picture, lines A, B, and C, D are parallel. Find the measure of the following angles. Explain your reasoning. They gave us two hints. They told us that lines A, B, and C, D are parallel, and they gave us one angle measure that's 38 degrees. We can use this clue to help us find the other angle measures of 38 degrees. And then now we can find the remaining angle measures because we know that the straight line is 180 degrees. So 180 degrees minus 38 degrees equals 142 degrees. And now we know the angle measure for the rest of the missing angles. Now we're all set to answer the questions. A. What's the measure of angle B, C, D? Now all we have to do is locate angle B, C, D. So find those three points, B, C, and D. The measure is 38 degrees. B, what is the measure of angle ECF? Again, locate angle ECF and you'll find the answer. This angle's measure is also 38 degrees. C. What is the measure of angle D, C, F? Find the angle and you'll find its measure. The measure of angle D, C, F is 142 degrees. Eighth grade open up resources, illustrative math, unit two, lesson two, circular grid, glossary terms, 
Center of dilation. The center of a dilation is a fixed point on a plane. It is the starting point from which we measure distances in a dilation. In this diagram, point P is the center of the dilation. Dilation. A dilation is a transformation in which each point on a figure moves along a line and changes its distance from a fixed point. The fixed point is the center of dilation. All the original distances are multiplied by the same scale factor. For example, triangle DEF is a dilation of triangle ABC. The fixed center point is 0, and the scale factor is 3. This means that every point of triangle DEF is 3 times as far from 0 as every corresponding point of triangle ABC. In this example, point C is this distance away from 0. Its corresponding point, point F, would be 3 times that distance away from 0. In this example, point B is this distance away from 0, and its corresponding point, point E, would be 3 times that distance away from 0. Problem number 1. Here are circles C and D. Point zero is the center of dilation, and the dilation takes circle C to circle D. A. Plot a point on circle C. Label the point P. Plot where P goes when the dilation is applied. B. Plot a point on circle D. Label that point Q. Plot a point that the dilation takes to Q. Problem number two. Here is triangle ABC. A. Dilate each vertex of triangle ABC using P as the center of dilation and a scale factor of 2. First I'll trace triangle ABC in blue. You can see that P represents the center of dilation. I can count how far away point A is from the center of dilation. Point A is a total of 2 units away from point P, the center of dilation. Since the scale factor is 2, I need to multiply 2 times 2 to find the location that point A has moved to during the dilation. Follow the line or ray that runs from the center point P straight through A and count 4 units. That will be the new location of point A after the dilation is made with a scale factor of 2. Now I'll follow the line from center point P straight through point B. And I count four units between center point P and point B. And since there's a scale factor of two, I multiply four times two for a total of eight units. The new point will be eight units away from center point P. Now I'll do the same with point C. I'll move from center point P straight through point C, and I notice that point C is three units away from center point P. With a scale factor of 2, I would have to double 3, so 3 times 2 equals 6. So the new point for point C will be 6 units away from center point P. Draw the triangle connecting the three new points. B. Dilate each vertex of triangle ABC using P as the center of dilation and a scale factor of 1 half. This next triangle has a scale factor of 1 half, so we need to start at center point P and go halfway to point A and put our first point. Then start at center point P and go halfway to point B and put our second point. And finally start at center point P and go halfway to point C and put our third point. Draw the triangle connecting the three new points. C. Measure the longest side of each of the three triangles. 
You could do the comparison with a ruler. However, I'm just going to drop the length down to the length below it and compare it. And I notice when I do that, the length doubles as you move to the next longer line. What do you notice? Starting with the shorter of the three lines, the length doubles as you move to the next longer line. D. Measure the angles of each triangle. You could use a protractor to measure these angles, but instead I'm just going to compare these corresponding angles. What do you notice? I notice that the measure of each angle remains unchanged as the scale factor changes. Problem number three from eighth grade unit one lesson 12. Describe a rigid transformation that you could use to show the polygons are congruent. Reflect triangle ABC in a vertical line and translate so point A meets point D. Problem number four from eighth grade unit one lesson 15. The line has been partitioned into three angles. Is there a triangle with these three angle measures? Explain. 39 degrees plus 99 degrees plus 42 degrees equals 180 degrees. So the answer is yes, because the sum totals 180 degrees, and all triangles have three angles with the sum of 180 degrees. Here's an example of that triangle. Eighth grade illustrative math, unit two, lesson three, practice. Dilations with no grid, number one. Segment AB measures 3 centimeters. Point O is the center of dilation. How long is the image of AB after a dilation with A? Scale factor of 5. 3 centimeters multiplied by 5 equals 15 centimeters. The image of AB after a dilation with a scale factor of 5 would be 15 centimeters. B. How long is the image of AB after a dilation with a scale factor of 3 and 7 tenths? 3 centimeters times 3 and 7 tenths equals 11 and 1 tenth centimeter. So the image of AB after a dilation of 3 and 7 tenths would be 11 and 1 tenth centimeters. C. A scale factor of 1 fifth. 3 centimeters multiplied by 1 fifth would equal 6 tenths of a centimeter or 3 fifths of a centimeter. 6 tenths of a centimeter and 3 fifths of a centimeter are equivalent. D. A scale factor of S. 3 centimeters multiplied by S equals 3S centimeters. Number 2. Here are points A and B. Plot the points for each dilation described. A. C is the image of B using A as the center of dilation and a scale factor of 2. So start with A and head towards B and since it's a scale factor of 2, you would move beyond B one entire length. This is where you would plot the point for C. B. D is the image of A using B as the center of dilation and a scale factor of 2. So now you're going to start at B head towards A, and move past A one full unit. So this is where you would plot the point for D. C. E is the image of B using A as the center of dilation and a scale factor of one half. Start at A and move towards B, but stop halfway. This is where you would plot the point for E. D. F is the image of A Using B as the center of dilation and a scale factor of a half, we would start at B, head towards A, and stop halfway. It would be at the same location as E. Number four. Triangle ABC is a scaled copy of triangle DEF. Side AB measures 12 centimeters and is the longest side of ABC. 
Side DE measures eight centimeters and is the longest side of DEF, A. Triangle ABC is a scaled copy of triangle DEF with what scale factor? Well, 12 centimeters compared to eight centimeters is the same as a 12 to eight ratio, which is the same as three to two or three halves. The scale factor would be three halves. B, triangle DEF is a scaled copy of triangle ABC with what scale factor? Eight centimeters compared to 12 centimeters. That's the same as an eight to 12 ratio. An eight to 12 is the same as two to three or two thirds. The scale factor would be two thirds. Number five, the diagram shows two intersecting lines. Find the missing angle measures. A. What number added to 102 equals 180? A plus 102 equals 180. That's the same as 180 minus 102 equals A. And 180 minus 102 is 78. So A measures 78 degrees. B. B is the opposite or vertical to 102 degrees. B has a measure of 102 degrees. C. C is adjacent to 102 and is vertical to A. Since angle A is 78 degrees and angle C is vertical of angle A, angle C is also 78 degrees. Number 6. A. Show that the two triangles are congruent. You would reflect across the y-axis and move down 5 units. B. Find the side lengths of DEF and the angle measures of ABC. The side length of D and E are equal to the side lengths of A and B. So DE equals 5 units. The side lengths of B C are equivalent to the side lengths of FE. So the side lengths of FE would be equal to three units. So FD would be equivalent to 3.2 units since side length FD is equivalent to side length CA. Angles DEF and ABC are congruent. Angle DEF is 36 and 9 tenths degrees. So angle ABC would also be 36 and 9 tenths degrees since those angles are congruent. Angles BCA and EFD are also congruent. Since angle EFD is 108 and 4 tenths degrees, angle BCA would also be 108 and 4 tenths degrees. Angle CAB and FDE are also congruent. Since angle FDE is 34 and 7 tenths degrees, then angle CAB would also be 34 and 7 tenths degrees. Open up resources. 8th grade illustrative math. Unit 2, lesson 4. Dilations on a square grid. Problem number 1. Triangle ABC is dilated using D as the center of dilation with scale factor 2. The image is triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Claire says the two triangles are congruent because their angle measures are the same. Do you agree? Explain how you know. Congruent triangles would have the same angle measures and the same side lengths. Since these two triangles do not have equal side lengths, they are not congruent triangles. Problem number two. On graph paper, sketch the image of quadrilateral PQRS under the following dilations. The dilation centered at R with scale factor two. Since the dilation centered at R locate point R, and since it's a scale factor of two, you'll have to multiply the distance between R and S by two. You start at point R and go twice the distance taking you past point S. Now do the same with point R and point Q. Start at R, go to Q, and then past point Q. 
so that you've gone two times the distance from R to Q. And finally, we can do the same thing with point R and point P. You're going to go twice the distance of point R to point P, taking you past point P. Draw your new points and connect the points. And this shows the dilation of quadrilateral PQRS with a scale factor of 2. The dilation centered at point O with a scale factor of 1 half. First locate point O and begin placing points that go halfway between point O and the other points. I'm putting the point halfway between point O and point Q. Now I'm putting a point halfway between point O and point R. Next I'll draw a point halfway between point O and point P. And last I'll put a point halfway between point O and point S. Once I've marked all the points for the dilation, I can connect the points so you can see what a dilation with a scale factor of one half looks like. The dilation centered at S with a scale factor of one half. First I need to locate point S because it's the center of the new dilation. Then I need to place new points for the dilation halfway between point S and each of the other points. I'll start with point R, then point Q, then point P. Now I can connect the points so that we can have a look at the new dilation with a scale factor of one half. Problem number three from eighth grade unit one lesson 14. The diagram shows three lines with some marked angle measures. Find the missing angle measures marked with question marks. Since I know that two supplemental angles total 180 degrees, I'm going to draw this line and use the information that they gave me to figure out the missing angle. 180 degrees minus 27 degrees equals 153 degrees, so this first missing angle measures 153 degrees. Let's go back to the angle that measures 27 degrees. Its vertical angle also measures 27 degrees, so we can change that question mark to 27 degrees. And the remaining question mark for the group of angles on the right hand side is the vertical angle of 153 degrees. Let's use the information that they gave us on the left side of this problem. 180 degrees minus 35 degrees equals 145 degrees. So the missing angle is 145 degrees and its vertical angle is also 145 degrees. Well you notice there's still one more question mark and that question mark is the vertical angle for the angle that measures 35 degrees. So its measure would also be 35 degrees. Problem number four from eighth grade unit one lesson four. Describe a sequence of translations, rotations, and reflections that takes polygon P to polygon Q. A 90 degree rotation to the right and translate until the corresponding vertices match up. Problem number five, from eighth grade unit one lesson six, point B has coordinates negative two and negative five. After a translation four units down, a reflection across the y-axis, and a translation six units up, what are the coordinates of the image? I chose to use a piece of graph paper to help me keep track of all these moves. I drew an x and y axis and I drew the point at negative 2 and negative 5. First I need to go 4 units down. To help me keep track I'll draw a new point at 4 units down. Next I need to make a reflection across the y axis. So I've drawn a new point across the y axis. 
And finally, I'll make a translation six units up, and the coordinates of the point are two and negative three. Eighth grade, open up resources, illustrative math, unit two, lesson five, more dilations. Problem number one, quadrilateral A, B, C, D is dilated with center coordinates zero, zero, taking B to B prime. Draw A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. First, I want to identify the center coordinates zero, zero. Next, I'll measure the distance from the center point zero, zero to point B. And then I can compare that to the distance from the center point zero, zero to point B prime. And I notice that it has a scale factor of two because the distance from center point zero, zero to B prime is twice the distance than from center point zero, zero to B. Now that I know it's a scale factor of two, I can repeat this process extending from center point through the other points using a scale factor of two and plotting the points for the dilation. Connect the points and you'll see the dilation A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. Here's an accurate method that you can use to help you place the point for the dilation. Start at the center point and count over three and up one and it takes you to B. Since it's a scale factor of two, start at B and move three to the right and go up one and place your point for B prime. And repeat that process for the other points. Left two, up three, left two, up three, left three, down two, left three, down two, and finally right one, down one, right one, down one. Problem number two, triangles B and C have been built by dilating triangle A. A. Find the center of dilation. One method would be to draw straight lines from the corresponding angles, extending them past the points. Where these two lines intersect will be the center of dilation. B. Triangle B is a dilation of A with approximately what scale factor? I need to see how many times a side length from triangle A would fit into the corresponding side length of triangle B. The side length fits approximately four times, so the scale factor is approximately four. C. Triangle A is a dilation of B with approximately what scale factor? So this is like the opposite of question B. Now I have to find out how many times a side length from B fits into the corresponding side length of A. The side length of triangle B fits approximately one fourth into the corresponding side length of triangle A. So the scale factor is approximately one fourth. D, triangle B is a dilation of C with approximately what scale factor? Now we have to find out how many times a side length from triangle C will fit into the corresponding side length of triangle B. Approximately two-thirds of the side length from triangle C fits into the corresponding side length of triangle B, so the scale factor is approximately two-thirds. Problem number three. Here is a triangle. A. Draw the dilation of triangle ABC with center coordinates 0, 0 and scale factor 2. Label this triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. First, I will identify the coordinates 0, 0 as the center. And next, I'm going to find the distance A is from the center point. 4 to the right and 2 down. And since this is a scale factor of 2, I need to go 4 to the right and 2 down to find the point for A prime. Repeat the process for the other points. 2 to the left and 2 down. 2 to the left and 2 down. And you found the location for B prime. 2 to the left and 2 up. 2 to the left and 2 up. And you found the location for C prime. Now connect the dots and you can see the triangle for A prime, B prime, C prime with center point zero, zero and a scale factor of two. B, draw the dilation of triangle ABC with center point zero, zero and scale factor one half. Label this triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. 
First I identify the center, 0, 0, and then I find the distance from the center to A. That's 4 to the right and 2 down. Since this dilation is a half a scale, I need to move 2 to the right and 1 down. This is where I put my point to represent A double prime. Now I'll do the same thing for the rest of the points. Let's go to B. It's 2 to the left and 2 down. And half of that would be 1 to the left and 1 down. And that's where I can put my point that represents B double prime. And finally, let's do the same for C. 2 to the left and 2 up. Half of that would be 1 to the left and 1 up. That's where I can put my point that represents C double prime. Now connect these points with lines and you'll see the dilation with a scale factor of 1 half. C. Is A double prime, B double prime, C double prime a dilation of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime? If yes, what are the center of dilation and the scale factor? Let me bring up the A prime, B prime, C prime triangle. If you take a close look, you'll see that the outside larger triangle is exactly four times bigger than the smaller triangle on the inside. So I would answer this as yes, A double prime, B double prime, C double prime is a dilation of A prime, B prime, C prime, and the center of dilation is the coordinates 0, 0. If you take a close look, you'll see that A double prime, B double prime, C double prime is exactly one fourth the distance away from the center compared to A prime, B prime, C prime. So the scale factor is one fourth. Problem number four from eighth grade unit one, lesson 15. Triangle ABC is a right triangle and the measure of angle A is 28 degrees. What are the measures of the other two angles? It's important to remember that the sum of all three angles in every triangle totals 180 degrees. The information provided the measure of two of the three angles. Since it's a right triangle, we know that a right triangle has a 90 degree angle. So 180 degrees minus 90 degrees leaves us with 90 degrees. We have just one angle left and that's the 28 degree angle. So 90 degrees minus 28 degrees equals 62 degrees. So the measures of the other two angles are 90 degrees and 62 degrees. Please consider subscribing and leave a comment below. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Eighth grade, unit two, lesson six. Similarity. Glossary term, similar. Two figures are similar if one can fit exactly over the other after rigid transformations and dilations. Number one, each diagram has a pair of figures, one larger than the other. For each pair, show that the two figures are similar by identifying a sequence of translations, rotations, reflections, and dilations that takes the smaller figure to the larger one. Here's a pair of figures. In the lower left hand corner you have triangle ABC and above it to the right you have triangle CFE. Translate point A to point C. Here's point A and here's point C. Translate A to C and then dilate with center A by a factor of two. From A to B, it's one unit. From C to F, it's two units. That's a scale factor of two. From point B to point C, it's two units. And from point F to point E, it's four units. That's a scale factor of two. For this diagram, we have triangle BCD and its corresponding triangle. Rotate 60 degrees counterclockwise using A as center. Here's a look at point A. After rotating 60 degrees counterclockwise using A as center, then dilate using a scale factor of two, still using A as the center. 
from point B to point D, it's three units, and the corresponding triangle, point B to point D, is six units. The side length doubled from three units to six units. That's a scale factor of two. Number two. Here are two similar polygons. Measure the side lengths and angles of each polygon. What do you notice? The side length from point A to point B is three units on the smaller figure, and the corresponding side length from point E to point F is six units. On the smaller figure from point B to point D is one unit. From point H to point F, it's two units. Lengths on the larger shape are twice the length of the corresponding lengths on the smaller shape. Now let's look at the angles. ABC corresponds with the angle EFG. The corresponding angle measures are the same. Number three, each figure shows a pair of similar triangles, one contained in the other. For each pair, describe a point and a scale factor to use for a dilation moving the larger triangle to the smaller one. Use a measurement tool to find the scale factor. Center of dilation is point B. Side lengths of the larger triangle are four times longer than the corresponding lengths of the smaller triangle, so the scale factor is one fourth. The center of dilation is point A. The side lengths of the larger triangle are three times longer than the corresponding lengths of the smaller triangle. Therefore, the scale factor is one third. Eighth grade open up resources, illustrative math, unit two, lesson seven, similar polygons. Problem number one, triangle DEF is a dilation of triangle ABC with scale factor two. In triangle ABC, the largest angle measures 82 degrees. What is the largest angle measure in triangle DEF? Angle measures don't change in dilations. Since the largest angle measure was 82 degrees in triangle ABC, the largest triangle of the dilation will also be 82 degrees. Problem number two, draw two polygons that are similar but could be mistaken for not being similar. Explain why they are similar. Here's an example of two polygons that are similar but could be mistaken for not being similar. Polygons A and B are similar because the angle measures remained unchanged and polygon B is a dilation of polygon A with a scale factor of 3 fourths. Problem number three, draw two polygons that are not similar, but could be mistaken for being similar. Explain why they are not similar. Here are two polygons that are not similar, but could easily be mistaken for being similar. One reason why they look similar is they're both made of 90 degree angles. Line segment BC is one half scale factor of line segment FG and line segment CD is two-thirds scale factor of line segment GH. Here's another look. Two is half of four, making a scale factor of one-half, and four is two-thirds of six, making it a scale factor of two-thirds. The two polygons are not similar because the scale factors of the side lengths are different. Problem number four. These two triangles are similar. Find side lengths A and B. Note, the two figures are not drawn to scale. Since these figures are not drawn to scale, we'll have to use the information that they provided us to help us figure out what the scale factor is. So let's look at these corresponding side lengths, three and nine. Well, I know that three times three equals nine, so the scale factor must be three. Now that we know that the scale factor is three, let's apply that to the other information that they've provided us. For this side length five, five times the scale factor equals B. So plug in three for the scale factor and you have five times three equals 15. So the missing side length 
for B is 15. Line A's length times the scale factor equals 21, or 21 divided by the scale factor equals line A's length. 21 divided by 3 equals 7, so the missing length for A is 7. Problem number 5 from 8th grade unit 2 lesson 3. Jada claims that B prime, C prime, D prime is a dilation of B, C, D using A as the center of dilation. What are some ways you can convince Jada that her claim is not true? First I'll check to see if A, C, and C prime are collinear, and they are, and I'll check to see if A, B, and B prime are collinear, and they are, and A, D, and D prime are also collinear. So, so far so good for Jada. I'll have to do a little bit more digging to convince her that her claim is not true. Let's compare the two angles. Angle B, C, D looks to be wider than angle B prime, C prime, D prime. The angles do not have the same measure. B prime, C prime, D prime is not a dilation of B, C, D because they have different angle measures. Also, if you look close enough, you can see that line segment C, D and line segment C prime, D prime are not parallel. And it's because of these reasons that B prime, C prime, D prime cannot be a dilation of B, C, D. Problem number six from eighth grade unit one, lesson eight. A, draw a horizontal line segment, AB. B, rotate segment AB 90 degrees counterclockwise around point A. Label any new points. going to insert a right angle sign. This identifies it as a 90 degree angle. And I'll place a new point on the end of the line segment and I'll identify that point as point C. C. Rotate segment AB 90 degrees clockwise around point B. Label any new points. I can insert a right angle symbol to identify another 90 degree angle and I can add another point at the end of the new line segment, and I'll label that new point D. D. Describe a transformation on segment AB you could use to finish building a square. Rotate segment AC 90 degrees counterclockwise using C as the center of rotation. 8th grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics, unit 2, lesson 8, similar triangles. Problem number 1. In each pair, some of the angles of two triangles in degrees are given. Use the information to decide if the triangles are similar or not. Explain how you know. Triangle A. 53 degrees, 71 degrees, and an unknown angle. The sum of all three angles will total 180 degrees for all triangles. So 180 degrees minus 53 degrees equals 127. 127 degrees minus 71 degrees equals 56 degrees. The angle measures are 53 degrees, 71 degrees, and 56 degrees. Triangle B also has the same angle measures. These triangles are similar because they have the same angle measures. Triangle C. 90 degrees, 37 degrees, and an unknown angle measure. Triangle D, 90 degrees, 53 degrees, and an unknown angle measure. Remember, the sum of all three angles will total 180 degrees. 180 degrees minus 90 degrees equals 90 degrees. 90 degrees minus 37 degrees equals 53 degrees. So it turns out the triangle C's angle measures are 90 degrees, 37 degrees, and 53 degrees, and triangle D has the same angle measures. These triangles are similar because they have the same angle measures. Triangle E, 63 degrees, 45 degrees, and an unknown measure. 
Triangle F, 14 degrees, 71 degrees, and an unknown measure. These triangles are not similar because they do not have the same angle measures. Triangle G, 121 degrees and two unknown angle measures. Triangle H, 70 degrees and two unknown angle measures. If these triangles were similar, that would mean that they would each have angle measures of 121 degrees and 70 degrees. So they're not similar because the sum of 121 and 70 is greater than 80. So it's impossible for any triangle to have angle measures 121 degrees and 70 degrees because it would total more than 180 degrees. Problem number two, A. Draw two equilateral triangles that are not congruent. The angle measures must be 60 degrees to be equilateral triangles. Equilateral triangles that are not congruent must have different side lengths. Here are two different equilateral triangles. They both are made up of 60 degree angles and their side lengths are of different lengths, making them not congruent. B. Measure the side lengths and angles of your triangles. Are the two triangles similar? The two triangles are similar because all their angles are 60 degrees and their side lengths are proportional. C. Do you think two equilateral triangles will be similar always, sometimes, or never? Explain your reasoning. Equilateral triangles are always similar because all equilateral triangles have equal angle measures. Problem number three. In the figure, line BC is parallel to line DE. Explain why triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADE. The two triangles are similar because they have equivalent angle measures. Problem number four from eighth grade, unit two, lesson four. The quadrilateral PQRS in the diagram is a parallelogram. Let P prime, Q prime, R prime, and S prime be the image of PQRS after applying a dilation centered at a point zero not shown, with scale factor 3. Which of the following is true? I think it sounds more confusing than it really is. There's a few things that are important to note. That P prime, Q prime, R prime, and S prime is a dilation of P, Q, R, S, and it has a scale factor 3. Let's take a look at A. P prime, Q prime equals P, Q. So these are line segments. So we know that it's a scale factor of three. Line segment P prime Q prime would be three times longer than line segment PQ. So they are not equal. B, line segment P prime Q prime equals three times line segment PQ. That is true. C, Line segment PQ equals three times line segment P prime Q prime. That is false. And finally, D. Cannot be determined from the information given. That's also false. They gave us enough information to determine if the statements are true. The only true statement is B. Problem number five. From 8th grade, Unit 1, Lesson 6. Describe a sequence of transformations for which quadrilateral P is the image of quadrilateral Q. Translate Q, 3 units left, 5 units up. Rotate counterclockwise 90 degrees. Eighth grade open up resources. Illustrative mathematics. Unit 2, lesson 9. Side length quotients in similar triangles. Problem number 1. These two triangles are similar. What are A and B? 
Note the two figures are not drawn to scale. They're asking us to find the side lengths for A and B. Since these two triangles are similar, we know that the triangles have the same angle measures, and we also know that the corresponding side lengths have the same ratio. The side length of 4 on the right-hand side triangle is the corresponding side length to the side length 10 on the triangle on the left. This means that the ratio is 4 tenths, or a ratio of 4 to 10. The scale factor is 2 and 5 tenths, or 2 and a half, because 10 is 2 and a half times larger than 4. Now that we know that the scale factor is 2 and 5 tenths, we can find the missing side lengths for A and B. 4 is the corresponding side length for 10, A is the corresponding side length for 15, and 9 is the corresponding side length for B. 4 times 2 and a half equals 10, and 10 divided by 2 and a half equals 4. We can use this same strategy to find A. 15 divided by 2 and a half equals A, and 15 divided by 2 and a half equals 6. So the missing length for A is 6 units. 9 times the scale factor 2 and a half equals B, and 9 times 2 and a half equals 22.5 or 22 and a half. The missing side length for B is 22 and a half. Problem number two. Here is triangle ABC. Triangle XYZ is similar to ABC with scale factor 1 fourth. A. Draw what triangle XYZ might look like. Triangle XYZ would look four times smaller than triangle ABC. So each side length for triangle XYZ would be four times shorter than each of the corresponding side lengths for triangle ABC. B. How do the angle measures of triangle XYZ compare to triangle ABC? Explain how you know. The angles are the same measures because they are similar triangles. Similar triangles have the same angle measures. C. What are the side lengths of triangle XYZ? The corresponding side lengths will be four times smaller than the side lengths of ABC. Four divided by four, or four times smaller than four, is one. So the corresponding side length would be one unit. And four times smaller than a side length that is seven units would be seven fourths or seven divided by four, which is one and three fourths. The corresponding side length would be seven fourths or equivalent. Four times smaller than a side length of five would be five fourths or equivalent. The corresponding side length on triangle XYZ would be five fourths. D. For triangle XYZ, calculate long side divided by medium side and compare it to triangle ABC. 7 fourths divided by 5 fourths. That's equivalent to 7 fourths times 4 fifths, or the reciprocal of 5 fourths. And 7 fourths times 4 fifths is equivalent to 7 over 1 times 1 fifth or seven-fifths. Now let's compare that to seven divided by five. And seven divided by five is seven-fifths. They are the same. Problem number three. The two triangles shown are similar. Find the value of D over C, which is also known as D divided by C. Since the two triangles are similar, 7.5 divided by 9 will be equal to D divided by C, and 7.5 divided by 9 is equivalent to 5 sixths. So D over C, or D divided by C, equals 5 sixths, or equivalent, like 7.5 over 9, or 15 over 18. Those are also equivalent to 5 sixths. Problem number four from 8th grade, Unit 2, Lesson 5. 
The diagram shows two nested triangles that share a vertex. Find a center and a scale factor for a dilation that would move the larger triangle to the smaller triangle. The smaller triangle is nested inside the larger triangle and it looks like a good center point would be coordinates negative one, positive one. A dilation moving from the larger triangle to the smaller triangle would have a scale factor of one-fifth because the smaller triangle is five times smaller than the larger triangle. Here's another look at the same lesson. Eighth grade, open up resources, illustrative mathematics, unit two, lesson nine, side length quotients in similar triangles. Problem number one, these two triangles are similar. What are A and B? Note, the two figures are not drawn to scale. Simply rearranging these triangles makes it a lot easier to find their corresponding sides. Side length 10 corresponds with side length four, and I know that 10 is two and a half times larger than four. And this tells me that the scale factor is two and a half, or two and five tenths. Now that I know the scale factor, I can find the missing side lengths. 15 divided by the scale factor, two and five tenths, equals A. Since 15 divided by two and five tenths equals six, the length for A is six units. Side length B divided by the scale factor two and five tenths equals nine. I can find the value for B by multiplying nine times the scale factor two and five tenths. The missing side length for B is 22 and five tenths. Problem number two. Here is triangle ABC. Triangle XYZ is similar to ABC with scale factor one fourth. A. Draw what triangle XYZ might look like. With a scale factor of one fourth, XYZ would look four times smaller than ABC. B. How do the angle measures of triangle XYZ compare to triangle ABC? Explain how you know. Angle measures remain the same in similar triangles, so the angle measures are unchanged. C. What are the side lengths of triangle XYZ? The side lengths of XYZ would be four times shorter or four times smaller than their corresponding side lengths. Four divided by four equals one. Five divided by four equals five fourths and seven divided by four equals seven fourths. D, for triangle XYZ, calculate long side divided by medium side and compare to triangle ABC. Seven fourths divided by five fourths is equal to seven divided by five. The result is the same or the result is equal. Problem number three. The two triangles shown are similar. Find the value of D over C or D divided by C. The value of D divided by C is equal to the value of seven and five tenths divided by nine. Seven and five tenths divided by nine is equal to 15 over 18 or 15 divided by 18, which equals five sixths. The value of D over C is 5 sixths, or equivalent, like 7.5 over 9, or 15 over 18. Problem number 4 from 8th grade, Unit 2, Lesson 5. The diagram shows two nested triangles that share a vertex. Find a center and a scale factor for a dilation that would move from the large triangle to the smaller triangle. The smaller triangle is nested inside the larger triangle. A good center point looks like it would be at coordinates negative one and one. With the dilation going from the larger triangle to the smaller triangle, the scale factor would be one fifth because the smaller triangle is five times smaller than the larger triangle.
Eighth grade, unit two, lesson 10, meet slope. Glossary term, slope. The slope of a line is the steepness of the line, also commonly known as rise over run. We can calculate slope by dividing the change in the y value between two points over the change in the x value. Slope. The slope of this line is two divided by three, or two thirds. It has a vertical distance of two units up and a horizontal distance of three units to the right. That's rise over run. The rise over run is two over three. Number one, of the three lines in the graph, one has slope one, one has slope two, and one has slope one-fifth. Label each line with its slope. For slope one, that means that the slope is one. The rise is one and the run is one, or one divided by one. And one divided by one is one. It went up one unit and it ran to the right one unit. The blue line is slope one. When the slope is two, that's the same as two over one or two divided by one. The rise goes up two units and it runs to the right one unit. Here you can see it goes up two units, runs to the right one unit. The yellow line is slope two. When the slope is one fifth, the rise is one and the run is five. Here you can see the rise of one unit and the run of five units. The black line is slope one fifth. Number two, draw three lines with slope two and three lines with slope one third. What do you notice? Well, I'll start with one point, then I'll rise up two and over one. Now I'll put a point somewhere else and I'll go up two and over one. For the third line, I'll put a point somewhere else. I'll rise up two and run over one. What do you notice about these lines? All three of these lines are parallel. Now for the slope one third. I'll start with a point. I'll rise up one and then I'll run over three. I'll put another point somewhere. I'll rise up one and run over three. For the last line, I'll put a point somewhere. I'll rise up one and run over three. What do you notice about these lines? They're also parallel. So what do you notice? All three lines in each set are parallel. Number three. The figure shows two right triangles, each with its longest side on the same line. A. Explain how you know the two triangles are similar. They both have a right triangle and they both have a slope of one half. B. How long is XY? XY is six units long. C. For each triangle, calculate vertical side divided by horizontal side. For the smaller triangle, the vertical side is two and the horizontal side is four. Two divided by four. And two divided by four is equivalent to one divided by two or two fourths equals one half. You can do the same thing for the larger triangle. The larger triangle has a vertical side of three and a horizontal side of six. And three sixths is the same as three divided by six. And three divided by six is also one half. D, what is the slope of the line? Explain how you know. The slope of this line is one half. We actually found the slope while we were answering C, the rise over run, or two over four for the smaller one, which is equal to one half. For the larger triangle, we have the rise of three and a run of six, three over six, or three divided by six, which is the same as one half. So the slope of the line is one half. Number four, triangle A has side lengths three, four, and five. Triangle B has side lengths six, seven, and eight. A, explain how you know that triangle B is not similar to triangle A. Triangle A has a small side length of three, and triangle B's small side length is six. 
and six is exactly double that of three. Let's look at four. If we doubled four, we would get eight, but the second side length for B is seven and not eight. The shortest side length is doubled, but the other side lengths are less than doubled. B. Give possible side lengths for triangle B so that it is similar to triangle A. You need to double three, double four, and double five. So if we were to double three, we would get six, double four, we would get eight, and double five, we would get 10. Side lengths for B would be six, eight, and 10. Open up resources, illustrative mathematics, eighth grade, unit two, lesson 11. Writing equations for lines. Problem number one. For each pair of points, find the slope of the line that passes through both points. If you get stuck, try plotting the points on graph paper and drawing the line through them with a ruler. A. Points 1, 1, and 7, 5. The difference in the y values is 5 minus 1, and that's 4. And the difference in the x values is 7 minus 1, and that's 6. So the slope is 4 over 6. Take a look at the slope. You can see that you rise up 2 and you move to the right 3. So that's a rise over run or a slope of 2 over 3 or 2 thirds. It's also equivalent to 4 sixths. And you can see to get from the first point to the second point, you have to rise up 4 and run to the right 6. You can find the slope without drawing the line on a graph. Just subtract the y values, 5 minus 1, and that's 4, and subtract the x values. 7 minus 1 is 6. So you can see that we have a slope of 4 over 6, which is simplified to a slope of 2 thirds. 1b, coordinates 1, 1, and 5, 7. The difference of the y values, 7 minus 1 equals 6 over the difference of the x values. 5 minus 1 is 4. So the slope would be 6 over 4. And simplified, that would be 3 over 2. Problem number 1c, coordinates 2, 5, and negative 1, 2. Here's what it looks like on the graph. And you can see to get from one point to the other, we have to rise up three units and move to the right three units. That's a slope of three over three, or three divided by three, which is one. This would be a slope of one. Again, we can find the slope without drawing a graph. Find the difference of the y coordinates. Two minus five, that's negative three, over negative one minus two. A negative 1 minus 2 is a negative 3. And negative 3 divided by negative 3 is a positive 1. So the slope would be positive 1. Number 1d. You have coordinates 2, 5, and negative 7, negative 4. Start by finding the difference of the y values. Negative 4 minus 5. Negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9 over the difference of the x values, negative seven minus two. Negative seven minus two is also negative nine. Negative nine over negative nine is positive one. This would be a slope of one. Problem number two, line L is shown in the coordinate plane. A, what are the coordinates of B and D? The coordinates of B are 4 and 0, and the coordinates of D are 8 and 10. B asks, is the point 16 and 20 on line L? Explain how you know. Well, we know that this line has a slope of 5 fourths because we can rise up from point C, 5 units, and move to the right to point D, 4 units. That shows a slope of 5 fourths. This can be represented with a set of coordinates that show the difference of the x-coordinates, 4, and the difference of the y-coordinates, 5. The coordinates 16 and 20 have the same slope as coordinates 
4 and 5 because 20 divided by 16 is equal to 5 divided by 4. So the answer to 2B is yes. This point would fall on the same line because the slopes are the same. 2C is a little bit different. They're asking about the point 20, 24, or 24 divided by 20. And that's not the same as 5 divided by 4. They have a different slope, so these would not be on the same line. 2D. Is the point 80, 100 on line L? Explain how you know. Yes, they could be on the same line and they have the same slope because 100 divided by 80 is equal to 5 divided by 4. For example, 80 is 20 times larger than 4 and 100 is 20 times larger than 5. Problem number 3. Consider the graph line. Mai uses triangle A and says the slope of this line is 6 over 4. Elena uses triangle B and says no, the slope of this line is 1.5. Do you agree with either of them? Explain. Well, as you can see here, they're both correct because 6 over 4 or 6 divided by 4 is 1.5. Another way to look at it is up 6 and to the right 4 has the same slope as up 1 and a half and to the right 1. And that would be a slope of 1 and a half because 1 and a half over 1 means 1 and a half divided by 1. And 1 and a half divided by 1, of course, is 1 and a half. So the slope would be 1 and a half. And notice that a slope of 6 over 4 would be the same because 6 is 1 and a half times greater than 4. Problem number four from 8th grade unit 2 lesson 7. A rectangle has length 6 and height 4. Which of these would tell you that quadrilateral ABCD is definitely not similar to this rectangle? Select all that apply. A. AB is equal to BC. Well, as you can see here, this rectangle AB is not equal to BC because four units does not equal six units. B. The measure of angle ABC equals 105 degrees. This one would also not be similar because as you can see, the measure for ABC is 90 degrees, not 105 degrees. C. AB equals 8. As you can see on this rectangle, AB equals 4. And 8 is exactly 2 times larger than 4. It could have a scale factor of 2. It could be similar to this rectangle. Let's take a look at D. This one says BC equals 8. Currently, the way we have our rectangle labeled, we have BC that equals 6. But if we were to rearrange these labels, BC could be 4. And again, 8 is a scale factor of 2 compared to 4. This could be a similar rectangle. Let's take a look at E. BC equals 2 times AB. So no matter which way we label this, one side length will not be exactly 2 times the other side length. So this one, for sure, is not similar. Let's take a look at F. 2 times AB equals 3 times BC. We could rearrange the order of these labels to make this true. And you could see that 2 times one side length could equal 3 times the other side length. So for example, 2 times 3 and 3 times 2, or 4 times 3 and 6 times 2. These rectangles could be similar. 8th grade Open Up Resources, Illustrative Mathematics, Unit 2, Lesson 12, Using Equations for Lines. Problem number 1. Select all the points that are on the line through coordinates 0, 5 and coordinates 2, 8. To check your answers, we can actually use a piece of graph paper 
with the x-axis and the y-axis and we can plot the points for the coordinates 0, 5 and 2, 8 and draw the line. This gives us a nice visual of the slope. The rise is up 3 and the run is over 2. So the slope is 3 over 2. And since m represents the slope, we can say that m equals 3 over 2. I'll use the equation y equals mx plus b to help us determine if the points of these coordinates fall on the line. First, let's use these coordinates that are already on the line, 2 and 8. In this set of coordinates, the y equals 8. So the y in the equation also equals 8. Eventually, I'll substitute that y in the equation with the number 8. Remember, the slope is 3 over 2, or 3 halves. Eventually, I'll substitute the m in the equation with 3 over 2. The x in this set of coordinates has the value of 2. So eventually, I'll substitute the x in this equation with a 2. Let's go ahead and rewrite this equation. I'll substitute the y with an 8. I bring down the equal sign. Then I substitute the m with 3 over 2, which is the slope. I'll multiply that by the value for x, which is 2, which is the same as 2 over 1. And then I'll add that all to b, which is the y-intercept, or 5. 3 times 2 is 6, and 2 times 1 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. And 8 does equal 8. We know that this set of coordinates will fall on the line. A. Coordinates 4 and 11. The y coordinate is 11, so we can substitute the y with an 11. Bring down the equal sign and the slope times the x coordinate value, which is 4, which is also 4 over 1. And since the y intercept is 5, instead of plus b, we'll substitute it with a plus 5. 3 times 4 equals 12. 2 times 1 equals 2. 12 divided by 2, or 12 halves, equals 6. And 6 plus 5 equals 11. And since 11 equals 11, we know that the coordinates 4 and 11 have a point on the line. B. Coordinates 5 and 10. The y value is 10, so we substitute the y with a 10. We bring down the slope and multiply that times the x value, or 5, which is the same as 5 over 1. And then we add that to b, the y-intercept, which is 5. 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 1 is 2. 15 divided by 2 is 7 and 5 tenths, or 7 and a half. And 7 and 5 tenths plus 5 is 12 and 5 tenths. Since 10 is not equal to 12 and 5 tenths, we know that coordinates 5 and 10 do not fall on the line. C. Coordinates 6 and 14. 14 is the y value. Bring down the slope and multiply that by the value for x, which is 6, or 6 over 1, plus b, or the y-intercept, which is still 5. 3 times 6 is 18, 2 times 1 is 2, 18 divided by 2 is 9, and 9 plus 5 is 14. Since 14 does equal 14, we know that the point for the coordinates 6 and 14 does fall on the line. D. The coordinates 30 and 50. Bring down 50 for the y value. 3 halves or 3 over 2 for the slope or the value for m. Bring down the x value which is 30 or 30 over 1 and bring down the b value which is the y-intercept or 5. 3 times 30 equals 90. 2 times 1 equals 2. 90 divided by 2 is 45 and 45 plus 5 equals 50. Since 50 does equal 50, we know that the point for the coordinates 30 and 50 fall on the line. E. Coordinates 40 and 60. The x value is 60. Bring down the value for the slope, 3 over 2, and multiply that by the x value, which is 40, or 40 over 1, 
and substitute 5 for b since the y-intercept is 5. 3 times 40 is 120. 2 times 1 is 2. 120 divided by 2 is 60. And 60 plus 5 is 65. Since 60 does not equal 65, we know that the coordinates 40 and 60 do not fall on the line. Problem number two. All three points displayed are on the line. Find an equation relating x and y. Again, I'll use the equation y equals mx plus b. I'll need to figure out the value for m, which is the slope of the line. With this graph and this line, it's pretty easy to use the rise over run method. And you can see from this point, it rises up 2 and over 1. So the slope is 2 over 1, which is the same as 2. So I can substitute the m with the 2. Let's use this set of coordinates to find our equation. We'll take the 9 and substitute it for the y, since the 9 is in the y value. We'll take the 6 and substitute it for the x, since the 6 is in the x value. For these sets of coordinates and line that they form, I don't know what the y-intercept is. However, I do know that 2 times 6 is 12, and 9 equals 12 minus 3. Since 9 equals 12 minus 3, then I know that b, or the y-intercept, is minus 3, or negative 3. Now that I've figured out that the slope is 2, I can substitute the m with a 2, and I've figured out that the y-intercept is negative 3, so I can substitute b with negative 3. Now my equation reads, y equals 2x minus 3, or y equals 2 times x minus 3. This equation shows the relationship between x and y. Problem number three. Here is triangle ABC. A. Draw the dilation of triangle ABC with center coordinates 2, 0, and scale factor 2. To locate the point that represents the center, you'll start at the origin and move two spaces or two units to the right and zero units up and place your center point. To make a dilation of triangle ABC, start at the center point A and extend through point C. Since it's a scale factor of two, each side length of the triangle will double in length. B, draw the dilation of triangle ABC with center two, zero, and scale factor three. This is similar to the previous problem A except for the scale factors 3, so the side lengths will triple in length. Making the dilation of triangle ABC three times larger than triangle ABC. C. Draw the dilation of triangle ABC with center 2, 0, and scale factor 1 half. This is similar to the previous two. However, the triangle will be one-third the size, or the length of each side length will be three times shorter. D. What are the coordinates of the image of point C when triangle ABC is dilated with center 2, 0, and scale factor X? Point A is located two units to the right of the origin, and point C is three units to the right of two. So that's like two plus three or five. But with a scale factor of S, which is unknown, we'd have to multiply that by S, making it S times larger or S times smaller. So far, we've written the coordinates that represent the horizontal movement along the X axis. Next, we need to figure out the vertical movement along the Y axis. Point C of triangle ABC is located one unit up. Making a dilation of triangle ABC with a scale factor S means that we need to multiply that one unit by S so that the new point will be located either S times shorter or S times longer than its current location. 
The coordinates that represent point C of a triangle ABC with a scale factor of S are 2 plus 3 times S for the X value and 1 times S for the Y value. E. Write an equation for the line containing all possible images of point C. Y over X minus 2 equals 1 third, or equivalent. Problem number 4 from 8th grade unit 2 lesson 4. Here are some line segments. A. Which segment is a dilation of line segment BC using A as the center of dilation and a scale factor of two-thirds. I've marked center point A in red and line segment BC. To make a dilation of line segment BC using A as the center point, you could imagine extending the line from point A through point B and beyond and another line from point A through point C and beyond. The line segment would have to be parallel with line segment BC and it would have to be two-thirds the length of line segment BC. The only line segment provided that fits this criteria is line segment FH. Not only is it parallel to line segment BC, but it's two-thirds the length of line segment BC. B. Which segment is a dilation of line segment BC using A as the center of dilation and a scale factor of 3 over 2, or 3 halves. 3 halves is equivalent to 1.5 times longer than line segment BC, so we're looking for a line that's not only parallel, but 1.5 times longer than line segment BC. And there's only one line segment that fits this criteria, and that's line segment GJ. C. Which segment is not a dilation of line segment BC, and how do you know? Line segment ED is not a dilation because it is not parallel with line segment BC. Please consider subscribing and leave a comment below. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.